Welcome back. At the end of the previous segment, we looked at uh, linear and angular momentum for um, deformable continuum bodies, right? Sorry, we did that for rigid continuum bodies. Today, we're going to do it for deformable continuum bodies. Uh, but uh, what, what I want to do is uh, revisit our final expression for um, the angular momentum and say just one or two things about it, okay? So let's finish up with that. So uh, okay, so we recall the angular momentum expression. of a rigid body. All right. Uh, the way we wrote it out was as follows. We said that uh, the, the result we derived was that J naught of T, right? And, that, and the naught there indicates that we are talking about angular momentum about the origin, right? This quantity we said was equal to the angular momentum of the center of mass, right? M being the mass, uh, G being the position of the center of mass in the current configuration, and therefore G dot being the translational velocity of the center of mass, okay? Uh, plus a, uh, a, a tensor, uh, a tensor that we called the moment of inertia tensor, right? And this is the moment of inertia tensor defined about the, uh, about the center of mass, right? The current position of the center of mass. This uh, times, uh, this, sorry, acting on our angular velocity vector omega hat, okay? The first thing I want to do is um, do a few uh, examples, couple, just, just a couple of examples of what, uh, of, of how JG uh, works out, right, in certain cases. So, um, uh, recall that um, JG equals the integral over omega t rho x comma t multiplying this quantity. The Euclidean norm square of the distance of every point from the center of mass multiplied with the second order isotropic tensor minus this tensor product of x minus g with itself. Okay, and this is what we called the moment of inertia tensor. All right, uh, just a few, just a couple of examples about uh, on, on, on how uh, components of JG work out. So let's suppose that we have a uh, the following sort of structure where we have uh, a uh, plate, if you would like to think about it as that. Okay. And uh, we are going to here locate our uh, axes at uh, our, our basis at uh, this point here, right? So we're going to say that this is E1. We have E2 along that direction, all right, and E3, okay? And let's suppose that our... Um, Coordinates here are uh, uh, 
uh, let me see, this point here is, we're we are, we are essentially doing a, dealing with an object that has a plate which has dimension A in this direction, um, B in that direction, and C in the, in the E3 direction, all right? Now, uh, for this sort of a uh, structure, uh, what I want to do is just, just put down a couple of results. So if we, we consider E0, right? E0 is um, what is sometimes called the Euler tensor, right, for, for the moment of inertia. And this is, is really comes out from this component, right, without the minus sign, right? So it's, it's just that product, just that tensor product. Um, but then I want to compute E0, which would mean that instead of doing it about the center of mass, we're going to do it about the origin, okay? So in this setting, we have uh, E0 is uh, defined simply as integral over omega naught because we are saying that the body hasn't yet deformed, right? This is still the reference configuration, okay? So it is just uh, this product, right? It is just x tensor x multiplied by rho zero dv, okay? Right, and you can see that it comes out of this uh, component, uh, this, this contribution to the, uh, to the moment of inertia tensor that I've circled. Okay, so if you, if you go through and do these calculations, then if uh, my memory serves right, you end up with an expression which has the following form. It's rho zero abc, uh, multiplying a matrix which has the form a square over 3, a b over 4, a c over 4, b square over 3, b c over 4, and c square over 3, and it's symmetric. Okay. All right. Now, um, so so that's just an example of how these how this calculation works out. Okay. Uh, now, in this case, if we say that, uh, of course, the center of mass of this plate is located at uh, the point um, a over two, b over two, c over two. Right using linear algebra notation for our vector, right? Okay, so in, in, in this case, uh, we, let, let me put down on the next slide what uh, the entire uh, moment of inertia tensor works out to be, okay? So with that, va with that uh, value for the center of mass, we have JG turns out to be equal to rho zero, a, b, c over 12, multiplying the matrix, b square plus c square, um, let me see what, this is c square plus a square, and here you have a square plus b square, the upper triangular and lower triangular sections or parts of the matrix are zero, okay? So that's what we get for the full moment of inertia tensor in this case. So, so those are just examples of how, how this works out. The next thing uh, I want to do is uh, revisit our angular momentum expression to point out something that um, this moment of inertia tensor does to the angular momentum, okay? All right, so we're done with this uh, example and now uh, Let's just return to that expression.
Okay, so that's our expression where, where I want to point out here that JG is the following integral, right? Right, we have the Euclidean norm square multiplying the isotropic tensor minus this tensor product. All right, um, observe that now because of the uh, action of this moment of inertia tensor, the contribution to the total angular momentum from this term here, right, from the angular velocity term is not necessarily directed along the angular velocity, okay? Right, so what this says is that if you have an object, a general object, and I'm not going to use the ball because the ball is very symmetric, but um, let's suppose you have something like this, right? Never mind the fact that it's a fluid. Just focus upon, no, never mind the fact that there's a fluid inside. Just focus upon the fact that this is an object that doesn't have, that's not, that has lower symmetry than that, uh, than the football or something else. Okay. Now, it may be spinning around some, some uh, axis, right? So even though the, ang the, the angular velocity may be around... Uh, maybe this axis, all right? If you were to go ahead and compute the, uh, the moment of inertia tensor for this object, right, uh, about the center of mass, right, what you would find is that, what you're likely to find is that uh, because of the, that the moment of inertia is essentially not uh, an isotropic tensor, okay? Uh, and that is shown in general through this, through this formula that we have here. Even though the first term is uh, is isotropic, right? This term is isotropic, but uh, that term in general does not have to be isotropic, right? It really depends upon the upon the axis about which we are we we are computing the moment of inertia, right? Or or the points about which we are computing the moment of inertia, and of course the shape of the object. As a result, when it acts upon the angular velocity tensor, we could very well get a uh, total angular momentum contribution from the second term, right? which could be off at a different orientation from the angular velocity itself, right? And that's just something to, to, to note about, uh, about, about, the, um, about the general expression for the angular momentum. It essentially comes about from the fact that the body may, have, uh, may, may not be symmetric with respect to the, uh, to the orientation of the, uh, of the angular velocity, right? That's something to note. Perhaps the last thing we have to do here is um, write out the, what happens with the rate of change of angular momentum, all right? So, uh, so, so from this, you can go ahead and compute the rate of change of angular momentum. What we get, I, I'm not going to go through the calculation, but I'll give you the final result. It's not very difficult to get to. Okay, the expression is the following. It is J naught dot function of time equals G cross M G double dot plus J G omega hat dot minus the Euler tensor evaluated about the um, center of mass, right? This term is, is the one that comes only from the second part of the, of the total moment of inertia tensor, okay? So if you were to integrate just that part out, th that's what EG is, right? So this, um, acting on omega hat, okay? Now that product is a vector. The final form is that on that vector, which I, which I now have parentheses about, we need to carry out a cross product with 
omega. Okay, I'm sorry, I squeezed all of that in too much. I'm going to just erase it and write it out more clearly. Okay, so that the final form is omega hat crossed with Eg acting on omega hat. And this arrow properly goes to there. Okay? If we look at these three terms, the first two are not difficult to uh, explain, right? The very first term arises from the, uh, essentially, the, uh, the uh, effect of uh, the fact that if we have our basis here, right? So we have our basis and we have the origin right here. Uh, the body is tumbling through space, and as it does so, what we know is that we can look at the center of mass, right? And we can look at we can look at this entire body as essentially a particle at the center of mass. Okay, so there's a certain amount of uh, of uh, the, the, some some component of the moment that goes into changing the total angular momentum uh, is is used in just giving this uh, imparting this body a a, uh, a linear acceleration, right? Or right? Okay, so that that's the g double dot term, right? The translational acceleration. Okay, and then because it's, it's located at some distance from the origin, which is g, right, that's the position of the center of mass, we're getting some contribution from the fact that we, this itself has an angular momentum about the center of mass. Okay, the next term comes from the fact that now as the body is tumbling about itself, that angular velocity itself may not be constant, right? You may have an acceleration, an, 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 an angular acceleration, which is omega hat dot in the second term. The third term comes about from the fact that as the body tumbles through space, uh, the way we compute its angular, um, its, its moment of inertia, okay, the, 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 the expression for the, for the moment of inertia itself is going to change, all right? And this comes about when we look at these uh, particular, at, at the form of these expressions, right? We see, when we look at the, the integral here, we see that it depends upon the current position x, Right? And in fact, uh, the difference between the position of any particle on, on this body and the position of the center of mass, right? It depends upon the vector. But as the body is tumbling through space, that vector is changing, okay? So there is a change in the moment of, in, in the moment of inertia tensor also as the body tumbles through space, okay? And th this comes about from the fact that we're computing these quantities in the current configuration, all right? And that effect is what gives rise to this final term here, Right? In particular, this contribution comes from there. Okay? So these are all the contributions to the rate of change of angular momentum of a, um, of, of a rigid body. And of course, we know that all of this is provided by an external moment, right? which yeah. we've been denoting as m0. Right? Okay. At this point, we are done with all our... Um, pretty much everything we wanted to say about uh, linear and angular momentum and their rates for rigid bodies. When we come back, we're going to stop now, but when we come back, we are going to look at how this carries over to deformable bodies.